How are you? It's the second week of classes, all right? And um, so today is Tuesday the 25th. And um, so let's just get right into it, all right? So uh, don't forget the calendar, certain types of things. Blackboard is being a little slow today. I'm sure you guys noticed that. Um, so uh, up and coming assignments that is very relevant to everything that we're doing right now. That's looking at global aging, where you guys are actually going to go into the world uh, bank um, data uh, um, site, and you're going to be able to go in there and uh, um, and directly access data. And this this thing just updates all the time with just a million, million, million about uh, bits of data. So it's, you're gonna you're gonna love it. All right, I'll get into that later. So let's just go into the the weekly assignment. Like the blackboard's being a little slow, so I'm gonna go ahead and go into the weekly assignment. Boom. And you can watch it go ding, 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 ding. All righty. And uh, just to, uh, you know, give you a heads up, okay, what we're doing is we're doing the second week right here. Okay, so uh, started Monday, all right, the 24th, and it's due on August 31st, all right. And so, all right, so my, my lecture is going to be going right on here. Uh, this says to go through trend five all the way through the end note, okay. And what have I, I have done is I've already... Um, downloaded that PDF file, and we're going to go down here. We're going to look at trend five. All right, um, do, 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 do. we're getting down there. All right, and we actually uh, talked trend five last week. Okay, so we'll get down there. Uh, bump, 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 bump. There it is. Okay, um, aging and population decline. And so again, we um, we remarked, of course, on Russia, and a uh, great place to visit, but um, I wouldn't want to live there right now. Okay, um, and they are. Uh, along with a lot of other countries in Europe, but um, mostly the former Soviet Union, are you know in a world of hurt because um, they have an aging population, and we can see that right here, where um, there's a decline. This is negative right here. See the negative numbers decline in the population. All these age groups, okay, uh, between these two, uh, time points of 2006 to 2030, and we see a dramatic increase in. Um, those age groups that are not going to be contributing to the, the economy actually kind of a drain on the economy that they um, they will be pulling out money through pension systems um, and they will not be putting money in right it's going to be a real difficult time in those countries okay so we can kind of look at this uh, 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 impact of the aging society now at a more um, singular kind of social level and that's family structure all right and so um so what's happening? Okay, no big uh, surprise is we have life expectancy increasing across all these different countries. Um, it's true not only in um, developed, okay, but also in less developed countries, uh, westernized and non-westernized. Okay, so um, but it's you know hitting harder, of course, in developed countries right now. And so we can look at the European Union and we can see what what's going on there. Okay, so. What's happening is you have um, fewer and fewer workers, okay, that are having to pay for um, the pensions that uh, a lot of these older people now are tapping into, okay. Um, so that's one thing, all right. So the only way that's going to work is you got to increase taxes, and that's you know the, the tax rate is pretty substantial in a lot of other countries. Um, the other thing that happens is um, since we learned that the fertility rate has gone down in uh, most of the uh, European Union, that um, if you want to keep business flowing, okay, and this is, you know, for my Marshall majors in terms of economics, you need workers, okay, um, and it, it's on, at all levels, where the service manufacturing or more intellectual level working, um, you still need workers, and um, if uh, people are retiring and aging out, um, the only way to replace those workers is through um, immigration, okay? Or make more babies, but people aren't doing that, <laughs> okay? All righty, so that's what this whole section is all about. And, um, and I've kind of done an a, a overview, okay? Um, like I said, people are not having kids, all right? So we have this kind of child, childlessness, okay? Now, what are we talking about? Family, family structure right here. Um, when we look at family structure, you know, we have multiple generations. The, the, you know, the old world cultural norm was to have, you know, three generations, sometimes even four in the same household. And it was a family collective where, um, where uh, the, the working age population would go to work 
and the grandparents would help raise the children. And it would oftentimes be done in the same household. Economically, this made sense because you could pool all of your financial resources rather than having three households where you have three mortgages. Why not just have one mortgage, get a bigger home in a nicer area and pool your resources and just have this caregiving kind of agreement. And then when the grandchildren get older and then they go off to work, then the grandchildren and the children then will do the kind of reverse caregiving for the older people, okay? If you don't have kids, then you start um, screwing up the kind of machinery of this, this contract, okay? And it's gonna affect the caregiving. And so, um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a big issue, okay? We see that in modern societies right now, 20% of women are not giving birth, all right? And, um, and it's much harder on women too, uh, later in life, if, uh, if they don't have children to pay from, they tend to have fewer assets because of just inequities, um, gender inequities in the system, all right? All right, so, um, so, so this, that's what this first part's all about, it's just grappling with, with caregiving and a kind of a breakdown in the family system. And we can see this right here. We're just looking again. This is a, a was a, a giant study uh, done, World Data Bank, okay, on um, uh, World Health Organization, a big collective, and, and they're in the process of doing um, a follow up on this right now. So we're looking right here at um, an example, okay. So this is living arrangements of people in Japan and uh, over 65 years of age and just you know the change that happened over a 40-year period from 1960 to 2000 okay and we could see that again um the family collective was strong the blue bar right here in the 60s okay um so uh, as an older person you'd be living with your relatives a married child something like that and we see this decline 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 the percentages of people down to 50 percent okay um this is where you would be living only with a spouse. So here, there's a good chance that, that grandma and grandpa was living with the family in the blue bar, okay? Here, all right, um, there's a, you know, a lack of fertility. Your children may have died, whatever it is, the support system's there. So it's just you and your spouse. Spouse dies, and we see the large percent of people that are living alone. And, um, and then if you're unable to um, maintain certain activities of daily living, you know, financial, um, cleaning yourself, feeding yourself, you end up in an institution, which was a, kind of a no-go for Japan. Um, but however, it's, it, it's become more and more important. Same thing, uh, same culture in China, okay? And so, uh, you know, we're gonna go back to the discussion, but you know, as an entrepreneur, as a business uh, major, um, countries worldwide have been looking to us for answers on um, how to deal with this cultural transition of caregiving and how to um, create um, these institutions, um, assisted living facilities, over, you know, over 55 communities. Um, and, um, and, you know, part of it too is an incentive-based system where, where the government will incentivize people to be, to be able to afford these types of communities. So this is all something you should be wrapping your head around right now. All right, so um, people live longer, okay? There's less, uh, less uh, children to care for them. And um, because we're living longer, um, um, we're gonna see this, this change in our work patterns and retirement. It means you gotta work longer because um, you can't depend on things like entitlement programs, Social Security and Medicare. Um, and what are called public pension systems worldwide, okay? Again, we're, we're gonna look at the European Union because um, they, they are hamstrung, okay? They are shackled all, for all these analogies because um, they have very large pensions that they give out to a large percentage of people. They have a smaller workforce. What are you gonna do? You gotta bump the tax rate to pay for this, okay? They're encouraging people just like we are by stepping up the, the retirement age to get Social Security to work longer. So you gotta keep your mental acuity, your physical well-being, because you're gonna be expected to work longer. And that's what this is all about right here, okay? When we're looking at different types of communities. Now, certain communities um, where um, you don't get to use your mind, okay, where it's a more physically demanding type of, of workforce, you're in trouble, okay? Because um, sadly, 
you know, in your 70s, you just don't have the physical strength to do a lot of the different kinds of work that that economy is driving, okay? All right, so um, we look down here, okay? So it's a big economic concern that um, people are not having kids, that older people are leaving the workforce, okay? They're going to work as long as they can. Um, these older people are now going to be looking for their pension, okay? Um, and so uh, this just means we're going to see this change in the ratio, this de decline um, as people live longer and their participation in the workforce falls. Boom, we need more money to, to, um, to uh, keep them going in the form of pensions, okay? All righty, so um, we can come down here. We can, you know, talk, you know, these are just kind of considerations. You know, don't, don't get too wound up on this, okay? Do remember, okay? that I'm going to go back over here, that you should also, I should have told you some very, very beginning, go ahead and open your quiz. And then as you're doing the reading, just boom, 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 answer the quiz. And you guys are welcome to work on this together as, as a team. Um, you know, I, I, a lot, oftentimes collaborative learning is, is better. So call your buddies up and say, hey, let's, let's work together on these quizzes, read the, read the assignment together. Okay. All righty, cool. All right. So let's go back to the, to the article. Okay. So we're looking again at the European Union, okay? And we see that um, we're looking at the employment rate, okay? And people are, are um, having to, okay? Because the pension, if it only covers 40% of your salary, that's maybe not going to be enough to live on, okay? So people are opting to work longer. And we see, we see the percentage of people 55 to 64 living longer, that are working longer. Yeah, they had this unbelievable, you know, luxurious pension system that you could tap into um, at age 55 in a lot of the countries, okay? All right, so um, we can look, and again, at the, uh, the you know, kind of countries I'm talking about, the incentive, okay, um, to grab onto that pension at that age 55 to 65. So we're going to look at that age group, and, and, and um, we're going to scroll down here, and... Um, and uh, it's the, the public pension incentive to uh, to retire early. See, it's very very high in countries like Italy, Italy, Belgium, France. Okay, Japan, no. Okay, so you're expected to keep working. Okay, um, and um, and uh, it's a, you know it's a difficult thing to do as you get older. Sweden, the U.S. again, we're, we're expected to keep working. Okay, all righty. So um um. Part of the kind of push that you're getting to, um, to keep working, it is a real incentive, is um, Social Security and pensions don't cover it, okay? And in fact, um, you get punished, you get penalized, we'll learn about that. If, you, if, if, if I were, I can get my Social Security at age 62, okay? I can already, I can retire right now. But my Social Security, first of all, it is, um, you know, at best about 3,500 a month, okay? And then if I, if I uh, tap into it um, before the official retirement age of 67 years of age, then, then they cut it on a percentile basis. Um, and for every month up to 62 that I go backwards, um, they cut it more and more. So if I were to retire at 62, I would only get 70% of that 3,500. Okay. However, if I work till I'm 72, okay, they'll bump it up to 120%. So you know what? There's an incentive right there to keep working. So, um, yes, so that's what this thing's all about right here and how countries are having to adapt, okay? Um, what do we need to do? Okay, um, so a strategy for, to bolster the economic security for older people, of course, is to increase the tax rate of you younger people to pay for the pension system. It is what it is, okay? And so, um, so we see that um, in a lot of the European countries that the tax rate is far exceeding 20% of wages on average, okay? Um, we have ours is a, is a means base, so, you know, I'm in a pretty high tax bracket, okay? All right, so we're looking at um, pension expenditures as, as a, a function of the gross domestic product. So as a country, we have services and manufacturing that we make profit from, okay? So, um, if I make my phone and I sell that, you know, to um, people in Mexico, Argentina, uh, Singapore, that's a positive, okay? Uh, a negative, okay, in terms of the gross domestic product is the money that I have to pay out in terms of pension. 
And in some cases, the, the, um, economists will, will include Social Security and Medicare in that. Okay, so we see that um, certain countries, you know, um, 12, on average, uh, you see it's 12.6 percent um, of the gross domestic product is paying out. It's a negative. Okay, you see certain countries are really high. Ireland's got it going on. Okay, Italy's at 15 percent. If you look at the U.S. government here. Um, we look right here at this figure right here, and we see in 2020 that we're going to be sitting pretty close to about 7%. Okay, so um, we don't, and this is a combination of government pensions where you have a guaranteed freaking salary, you know, like our congressmen, okay, um, um, uh, city workers, city managers, um, anything that is government based, firemen, police, and they, they retire at a really high rate of whatever they were making. It's not like the Social Security system where you're making 30 grand. You can you can retire with a pension close to 300 grand a year, for example. And there's a lot of controversy about that. Okay. Um, so we're like I said, we're looking. Sorry about that. We're looking at about 7% by 2020, which is right now. Okay. Uh, if we look back here, 7%. So this is where we stack up down in here, you know, compared to other countries. Okay. Alrighty. And that's you know certainly things something to think about. Okay. We're looking at China. Uh, remember, they they are, were had crazy population growth. Okay, they're still the most populous country in the world. Soon to be taken over in the next couple of years by India. And then remember, there India will be taken over in, in about 2060 by Nigeria. Um, and they're going to go through all these pains. And so uh, what happened is they had fewer workers and a higher retirement age. Okay, so they had to uh, adapt to that. So this is. Um, the ratio of workers to pensioners. This is the people paying in to the pension system. If you have fewer workers, more retirees, something's got to give, okay? And so you're going to have to pull money out of their paychecks in the form of taxation, okay? The other thing that's got to give is you you set a ceiling on how much money people have. So you, you better either have um, savings, okay, which China opened up a few years back, okay? In terms of, uh, of the equity markets and, and things like that, and, and you know, stock markets, um, the other thing is you better have your family collected together, all right? Even though it's you know it's dramatically reduced because of the one-child fertility rule. Okay, um, maybe aunts and uncles, you know, extended families have to work together to survive. Okay, all right. So this is a big economic challenge um, of fewer workers more people that are dependent and reliant on um, government programs like Social Security, um, pensions, uh, like, like, like I said, for our firefighters and for, for police officers and for, you know, Cong Congress and congressional people, senators, city workers, on and on and on. I always watch these city workers that just hang out in the park in their truck and they're going to get an unbelievable pension. They're maintaining the, the, the baseball field, okay? All righty. Um, so we're looking at um, uh, the other thing that uh, that we have to consider is with this economic challenge, you got to create an incentive to save on your own. Okay, and this wasn't done in Europe. Uh, we see the number of households, okay, that own individual stocks or bundles of stocks called mutual funds. Okay, this is like the S&P 500. This is a, a large example. The Dow uh, index. Um, those are just, um, but they're tons and tons of these different types of bundled uh, stocks. And um, we see that Sweden is way ahead of the curve. So people are less reliant on government pensions because they've saved, okay? That's where we're at as, as well. So we're gonna have a huge section about this. You guys should consider opening up a Fidelity account right now and just start playing with it, okay? Um, you just put money into these mutual funds, okay? You um, independently, you're too young right now, unless you're, uh, unless you're working, you have to be working. If you're working, you can set up a Roth IRA. Okay, and we'll talk about that later on. If you're not working, you can still invest. All right, so um, um, there's lots and lots of opportunities for um, economic growth and considering the uh, um, you know, a knowledge base based on this aging population, right? And, um, we see that uh, uh, when you're young, okay, um, you get more and more and more and more income. You're less and less of a consumer. 
then you become more of a consumer and then obviously you retire and you continue to consume. Okay, this is the, the kind of the GDP cycle. This is an example of a tie worker. Um, every country is a little bit different on that. Alrighty, so, so that's the, the drill on that. Um, I'm going to get out of there. This is a really cool site. In fact, I, I'm going to probably just add this to the site now because it, we should kind of think about this when it comes to, to the U.S., okay? Um, well, let's go back down here. And then we want you to, to, to look at um, population aging and this dynamic transition that's happening, all right? So this is uh, globally, again, right here. Boom, the, tebend, the dependents are changing. People are having less kids. Sorry, that's my... Uh, Camera, somebody's robbing my car out front, and um, and more and more older people. Okay, and and being able to economically, financially prepare for that. Okay, um, we see that the older countries had a long time to prepare for it. We had a pretty long time to prepare for it, but some of these younger countries, younger in terms of their economic growth, have had little time to prepare for this. Okay. Some of them are just on a grander scale, all right? So like, like I mentioned, India and China, okay? And, um, and uh, so you see the dramatic growth in population over age 65 going out through 2050, okay? So we want you to come up with some, some solutions, especially my business majors, okay? And how you're gonna deal with that as an entrepreneur, okay? Um, we have some kind of fun uh, uh, videos here, okay, talking about uh, Japan, okay, um, and again, the, the when we look back, um, the the drive there is that you're on your own, you're not getting the big pensions, you have to work, 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 and save money. People are just foregoing reproduction, okay, um, and there is a there is a crisis because um, as a result, there's a real disproportionate um, balance in terms of older people, and then we look right here at this, um, again, the economic woes because of the lack of workers because of this fertility crisis, all right? So, all righty, guys, so that's that's the drill on that. Um, uh, work together on this, it's all good. Uh, we're loving your contribution so far. And um, what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna say, I'll see you guys next week.